and welcome to another ARCHICAD video tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how you can calculate an area in ARCHICAD. In order to do that I'm first going to draw four walls so that we have something to measure. So I'm just going to do one click over there, one click over here, here and here. So once you have your four walls there are pretty much three ways for you to measure an area. First one is to use the measure tool. So you can activate that either by clicking over here or by hitting M. So once you hit M, you do one click, two clicks, three clicks. And you can already see just by doing three clicks in this tracker, uh, as you move your mouse, the real time uh, area of the grayed out zone on your screen. So once you do this fourth click over here, you can already see the area of this square, so it's 81.82 square meters. You could go over here to, to close the square, but the area is the same because the gray area stays the same. This is not a method that I use very often because uh, once you measure it, it automatically disappears. So once you do escape, you don't have that area recorded anywhere. But in a pinch, if you don't want to have that area recorded and you want to measure, you can use the measure tool. The second option is to use the fill tool. You can use that by either... We have this third construction method selected here, so if I do a rectangle, I drew out my fill, I select it and I check here show area text, I can see the area of the fill. So I'm going to delete it and I'm going to space click. So I'm going to use my magic wand tool. I'm going to have this fill over here and then the same thing, show area text. If you want to have the area text shown on all of your fills, you can just click this before drawing and then once you draw, you're going to have one last click to hit in order to place your area. Okay, so I'm going to delete this. And the last option is to use the zone tool. So once you have your zone tool selected, um, I'm going to walk through some of the settings of the zone tool. This is the most complex option. This is basically a tool specially designed in order to show you more information about a room. So if you uh, leave this construction method, the second one that it automatically uh, auto select what you're going to do is you're going to do a click and it will automatically detect the inner edge of the room and with the second click you place the information box of the zone so this is the easiest construction method because it basically auto detects for you the inner area of your zone it, i'm going to delete this for now and i'm going to show you this other method and these are basically just your polyline, rectangular, rotated recti rectangular options. So with this you can just draw whatever area you want and you have your zone. I'm going to delete this. I forgot to mention that for this con second construction method you do have to have a closed um, perimeter in order for it to auto detect. So I'm going to suspend my groups for a second I'm going to delete this wall and if I try to click over here it's going to tell me that no closed polygon was found around the clicked point. If you do have this uh, situation where you don't want to have a third wall but you do want to keep using this construction method then what you can do is use your line tool and then you're gonna do two clicks, draw a line and then select this line and make sure that this zone boundary option is clicked. So now when you use your zone tool, it's going to, this line is going to act as a zone boundary. So this is one way to uh, still use the second construction method without uh, having four walls or a perimeter of walls. Okay, so I'm going to draw this wall back. The third option is to uh, use this reference line 
construction method. I honestly never ever use this option, so I either use the inner edge or the manual construction method option. If you don't want to have this color showing you the area of your zone, what you can do is select it, go to settings either by clicking over here or hitting Ctrl and T. Over here you're gonna activate this second tab and I usually like to select the background option and over here in the background pen I'm going to select this see-through option. So once I do this I hit OK and now my zone is white but it is not just white it is completely see-through. So if I put an object over here let's say and I send this object all the way to the back so right click display order send to back I'm still going to be able to see it with the zone as it was before let me show you if I put another zone in here it tells me that there already is a zone here if I want to do another one I'm gonna say yes you can see that the second zone covered the object before so now if I delete it you can see I really prefer this option of having a zone where the background is transparent and I can see everything underneath so I'm going to show you just a couple more things. I'm going to select my zone. I'm going to go back to settings. What I usually like to do is I do the uniform stamp pen option and I select a black pen. And over here I usually put uniform display. And now you can see that the area detail disappeared. So what I'm going to do is go to content and I'm going to go to area volume. And over here I'm going to click back this measured area option. So now the measured area appears and I also have the floor finish. Let's leave that for now. And I'm actually going to input the, um, something over here. So under finishes and height I'm going to leave this checked and I'm just going to say that in this room we have tiles. I don't like how this looks with the frame so I usually go over here to stamp display settings and under appearance I ch change this frame style to be completely invisible and I hit OK and that is basically it. You can also change the zone name over here so let's say we have a kitchen and that is basically it. These are the basics when it comes to the zone tool. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!